Hi everybody, it's Chef Martin from the Thermoworks Demo Kitchen and today we're excited to bring the heat with Liz Merrick of the Sugar Geek Show. Liz is famous for her cake and chocolate and her candy and all the decorating work and all these things. And we're so excited to have you with us today. What's happening? I'm really excited to be here. You know, um, I'm a geek about all things baking. Yeah. But one of the geekiest parts in the baking and, you know, sugar community is chocolate. Yeah. And a lot of people are intimidated by it. And it's one of those things that I've noticed a lot of people are super curious about. Like, mm. why is this chocolate not working the way I think it should be? What's the problem? And I know a lot of those answers can be like summed up in like five steps. Okay. And most of them are re regarding temperature. So well, who better? Where where else should where we be but here, right? Should okay. we be talking about temperature, but at ThermoWorks. All so right. um, we're gonna show how to temper chocolate Okay. Have you tempered chocolate before? I have, yeah. Okay. It so, turns out about 60% of the time. There'll be a test later, so All right. you know. <laughs> so uh, in case you have never tempered chocolate, I am gonna go over all the like, I would say geeky, but you might not uh -huh. boring, but you'll be happy that you know them because later you'll be like, why did this work out? Oh yes. So when we talk about chocolate, usually anybody who's talking about tempering chocolate, we are talking about chocolate that contains cocoa butter. Cocoa mm -hmm. butter um, is like an oil. It sets hard at room temperature. You heat it, it melts, right? Um, so cocoa butter has a very specific crystal makeup at different temperatures. Mm -hmm. So depending on if it's in its melted form or it's almost melted form or it's solid form, it does different things. So really all tempering is, is controlling temperature. Same thing that glass blowers, metal workers, mm -hmm. a lot of people who you, uh, use temperature for things like pottery, you you are using certain temperatures to control the, the chemical makeup of this thing. Okay. Why would we even do that? Like, what's the point? Why can't I just melt this and then when it hardens, it hardens and like, who cares? I'm dipping strawberries and I get the chocolate melts and I throw it in there, but exactly. they always look bad. Exactly. So one of the main questions that a lot of beginner people who are working with chocolate have is, why is my chocolate not setting up? Do mm -hmm. I need to put it in the fridge? Um, why has it got weird streaks going through it? Mm -hmm. um, did I ruin it? And why is it not smooth enough? Why is it lumpy or too thick, right? Yeah. So these are things that if you've been to pastry school or if you've been working with chocolate, you, you have read many books yeah. and watched a lot of YouTube videos. You're like, oh gosh, that's what it is. Yeah. And it's, it's not, uh, part of it is just understanding that this, is um, it's like wax, right? Yeah. So it doesn't dry, it yeah. cools. So when it's hot, it's liquid, and when it's cold, it's solid. So your chocolate will never dry properly if it is not tempered properly. Mm -hmm. Now there are chocolates out there like uh, Candy Melts, um, Merkins is a really popular brand uh, that does not have cocoa butter in it, and it will, will solidify at some point, and that's okay. I mean, that's totally yeah. usable. But the trade-off is flavor and texture. Mm -hmm. um, cocoa butter has this temperature um, that it melts at that is ironically just below body temperature. Yeah, so you put perfect. it in your mouth, immediately it melts and dissolves on your tongue. And when something dissolves on your tongue, like ice cream, and it coats your tongue so you get all of that flavor. Yeah. Unfortunately, candy melts do not dissolve at room temperature. So you feel that waxy chewiness and you don't get a lot of the flavor. So it's, there's nothing wrong with it, but you, but you, it's good. To we understand. also see that like in like, like cheap, for instance, Easter candy, like yes. those eggs and stuff. That's not yes. real, real chocolate. That's no. got a lot of oil and, and yes. wax and stuff. In it. Uh, because it's cheaper. The, the shelf life is longer mm -hmm. and most kids don't care. When I first started working with a real chocolate that was made for melting and, and using, uh -huh. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much easier. When we're tempering chocolate, we want to pay attention to the temperature, um, the time. Okay. Got to give it time to cool mm -hmm. down to the proper temperature. And we must agitate it so that it has, it develops the crystal. So time, okay. temperature, agitation. So sometimes people will just melt the chocolate mm -hmm. to the proper temperature and it's not tempered. We have a uh, double boiler over here, which I've never yeah. used before, or a fancy pot Really nice, here. yeah. It, I'm gonna have to get one of these, you guys. So we have our chocolate melted, and let's see what temperature this is at. 
This is at 112, which is good because you generally want your chocolate to be heated up to about 110 Fahrenheit. Um, I'll bounce back and forth between those because I don't know why. <laughs> I just used um, got some paper towels here. And then, um, do we have another bowl that we can pour this chocolate into? Yes. Otherwise, it's going to stay warm forever. Oh, actually, can I use this one? Yeah, anything okay. you want. So, first temperature, 110 degrees. What this does is it breaks down all of the crystals, so there's no bad crystals. Mm -hmm. It's like ground zero, okay? Yeah, there's no crystal forms here at all. No crystal forms at all. And we melted this over a double boiler, but you can also melt it in the microwave. Mm -hmm. So we transfer to another bowl uh -huh. so that it's immediately going to start cooling. Right. Um, We're at room temperature in the a bowl nice, already. Yeah. A nice bowl is going to immediately start distributing um, the heat away. So we've already gone down five. degrees. Yeah. So the next thing we can do is start adding in more chocolate that is not melted to further cool it down. And if this is if this chocolate is ever over 90 degrees Fahrenheit, oh, the beta crystals are, are ruined. Okay. So we're trying to get it down to 90 degrees without having big chunks of chocolate in there. Okay. So we're not going to add like a ton. We're just going to add like a little handful. Yes. This is the time part. Okay. Just a little, yep. a little patient, yep. which is one of the reasons we don't want to do this again. No. Also, want, temper more chocolate right. than you need. Like... <laughs> Have it ready. Have it, have ready, it ready to go yeah. and like don't worry about having to do this again. Yeah. So this is, if we were to continue mixing and melting in this way, this is called the seeding method. Seeds, seed seeds. crystals, yeah. Yeah, we're taking the cocoa butter that is in the tempered chocolate and we're infecting this other chocolate. That's not a good way of saying Inoculating. That. We're inoculating it. <laughs> we're growing. That's we're growing right. crystals. Um, but they will only grow at the right temperature. Mm -hmm. So mixing is distributing the heat. It's melting the chocolate. And then at that perfect temperature, 33, 33 degrees Celsius, it will begin to grow the crystals. Okay. So it's important. Keep, keep looking. Yeah. What if it accidentally gets too cold, though? Um, if you like walk away and you're like, shoot, this is all the way down to like 80 and this is not melted. I have big chunks in there. You can just heat it up a little bit. You can just okay. put this back into this, which is probably still warm. Mm -hmm. Five degrees. Okay. I do a 10 second in the microwave. All right. And it just goes up a couple degrees. Nice. Um, and then you're like, oh no, I accidentally heated it too high. Well, yeah. you're just two steps ago where you were before yeah. uh, and we're cooling it down again. Longer, that's okay. And it is okay. You're not ruining your chocolate. It, uh, oh my gosh, this lady told me one time that she got white streaks in her chocolate and she threw it away. And I was like, <laughs> why don't you just light your wallet on fire? This is so sad. Well, you know, I, I, I've talked to people who don't understand how chocolate works and they think sometimes that happens that the chocolate has gotten moldy because it looks kind of yeah, like white yeah. mold on there. And it kind of like raises up and looks yeah. kind of weird. But Chocolate How? can't mold. No, it cannot. There's no, yeah. you need, there's no water in it. You need water and moisture for mold to occur, which is why chocolate bonbons, like, you know, yeah, why they keep forever. Why they keep forever. Yeah. And why it's really important to make sure that you are, you know, preparing whatever fillings and stuff correctly because they might have a uh, liquid in it. Okay. So <laughs> right, we are at this moment at about the right temperature and as long as I have a couple of unmelted bits in here, mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain that one first. Okay. What I want to do is I want to chop this pretty finely. And it, if it's a bar, grating it is great. Grating is great. Okay. Let me just yeah. chop it. All right. You don't need a lot. So chocolate melts from the outside in. So right, if yeah. we left it big like this, it would not melt. And we have a, a very little surface area compared to the amount of chocolate right. there. So we're basically increasing surface area. We are. So okay. now the heat from the chocolate will grab onto those crystals uh -huh. that are in here and they like grow. Yeah. So now we're agitating, right? Like yeah. this. You have to, yeah. Gotta, uh -huh. gotta agitate. Yep. Um, so that we can distribute those crystals into okay. the rest of the chocolate. And so we're doing even more seeding here than, than, than we did before. Exactly. Okay. So are we looking, uh, um, uh, obviously temperature is what we're going for. Is there though, to the relative amateur eye, mm -hmm. am I going to notice any difference in the texture or am I just, I need to go off of temperature solely basically? I think that unless you were extremely skilled, you would not be able to tell okay. by eye, um, especially because different 
chocolates have different fluidity, which brings mm. another point that your chocolate might be thick because you have a chocolate, even if it's like a high quality chocolate, it has low fluidity, which means it doesn't have a ton of cocoa butter in it. Okay. The cocoa butter is the only liquid thing in yeah. chocolate. Everything uh -huh. else is powdered milk, sugar, um, cocoa, powder, cocoa powder, and soy lecithin, okay. depending on the type of chocolate. Dark chocolate doesn't have any sugar, uh -huh. so it's less sweet. And then milk chocolate has sugar and dairy, and white chocolate has no cocoa powder. Yeah, no cocoa powder. So we're warming this up just a couple of degrees on a pot of hot water because we were just a little bit low and there's some lumps, right? Exactly. We just don't... It, so you could pop this into the microwave, but the, the water is always going to be gentler. You're going to mm -hmm. give yourself a little extra... Um, insurance here. Okay, yeah. Because, you know, I've, it's been on here for a little bit and we're still only at 31. So I'm literally just going to keep, keep, keep patient. Keep going. Yep. Keep agitating. Chocolate is a game of patience. It really, really is. And honestly, it's not going to hurt it to be on here for longer because we're just agitating and distributing those crystals. So we're going to have a nice, All strong temper. So this is tempered now. I that think. looks really lovely. Yeah. It's, it's smooth. It's, it's, nice it's, it's smooth. got a nice liquidity to it. Nice glossiness. Let's talk about the molds for a second. Yeah. I have a mold addiction. So. Could be I, worse. I brought all kinds of different <gasps> acrylic molds. That's beautiful. They're so I fun. Love I love that one too. Oh okay, gosh, so we'll yes. use this one. Okay. Um, but these are our polycarbonate molds. They uh, will produce chocolate with the nicest shine. I would call okay. this a professional mold. Okay. You can buy molds that are silicone, um, plastic. They're gonna be fine, you uh -huh. know, especially yeah. if you're using tempered chocolate but it's a lot harder to demold. So for a silicone mold, you have to peel the chocolate out of the silicone. If you're making hundreds of bonbons, like who's got time for that? You I just wanna grab your mold, that. turn it over, slap it on the counter, it's out. Yeah. And you can make dozens and dozens in one mold. Um, but if you're just a hobbyist and you're watching this video like I want to make a chocolate bar, it's okay. So we've got the molds here and this is ready. Do we need to do anything to prep the molds? Okay, so with any type of mold, whether it's silicone, plastic, or polycarbonate, you wanna make sure it's clean, clean and shiny. Right. A clean, shiny mold makes shiny chocolate. All right. Okay? So we're gonna take some uh, clean paper towel and just give it a nice shine. So we just wanna make sure those are nice and clean. Okay. And this is fine. It can now cool down as long as it's in a liquid form and it doesn't go over 34 degrees Celsius, it will be Because okay. if we cross 34, then we're gonna remelt those crystals exactly. that we tried so hard to form, right? I do wanna talk a minute about cocoa butter in okay. a colored form because um, adding colored cocoa butter to gourmet chocolate bars, mm. anything, it's a great way of adding some oh, yeah. visual interest. So, so easy, but again, cocoa butter is that main liquid ingredient that is in chocolate. There's just no no sugar, there's no cocoa powder, there's no dairy. It's okay. just pure cocoa butter. Just with a little color in it. So, um, normally I would use a brush, like a paintbrush. Do you have like- I've got, I've got some. Um, okay. Do you like silicone or, or bristles? It doesn't matter, just something to kind of oh, we'll make a mess it. with. We'll go with. Okay, cool. Ooh, this is cool. Yeah. I'm gonna have one of these. We'll send one home with you. All right, cool. So, uh, this is the best part, you know? Oh, you you're just, just flicking it on there. Yeah. Kind of. You could just drizzle, but I'm trying, we're I'm trying going, to pretend we're, like we're, we're going being, kind of Jackson Pollock here. Yes. A bit. Oh, I love this. This is and, and you so, get just fine little, little, little bits of it. In there. Yeah. So you can do like kind of a galaxy thing, right? Oh, I love it. So this is really fun. Also, um, some chefs, they use their fingers to kind mm. of like do a, uh, like a watercolor look where you mm. can layer up. So we're using yellow because it's the, the branded color of our favorite yep. thermometer. So yes, we made a mess. That's why- We'll no, clean it up. You know, yeah. it's part of the process. It's okay. That's right. So now I'm going to use a different one. Hopefully there's another one in here. Yep. This one's orange. They'll know where I was today. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do another kind of layer. Have you used colored cocoa butter before? I have not. This is this is new to me, I, and I'm really wanna, loving what's yeah, happening. Yeah, I kind of want to like get a little bit more white in there. So now we have to put this in the fridge. Okay. So we want this to set before we put the tempered chocolate on top. Otherwise, oh, so it's going to smear, smear it exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah. So let's let let's, me get that door for you. So when you want to, when you're trying to take a regular chocolate bar and bring it to a gourmet level, all you have to think about is 
uh, flavor combinations and textures, right? Okay, yeah. So creamy, crunchy, salty, sweet, acidic, you know, yeah. and that's like endless. Yeah. But since we're with barbecue people, really do some do some bacon. So this is candy bacon with spices, barbecue spices. Love it. So like Love a sweet it. and spicy rub. Yeah. This one's from Hey Grill Hey. Sweet and spicy goes really well with chocolate. Yeah. Um, the sweetness from the sugar. Uh, you ever had like chocolate covered fruit, right? It's that mm -hmm. sweet and mm -hmm. spicy. So we're gonna have the sweet from the sugar, the spicy from the um, the actual spices. We have the creaminess of the chocolate, and we'll even get a little texture from the bacon, but... And from the sugar in there. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. but I feel like we could add even a little bit more texture with like nuts, okay, or yeah. you can add dried fruits, or you can do um, cookies, crumbles. Yeah. Cereal, like, yeah. you know? Start thinking about what what are the flavors? What's It's almost like sushi or a soup or something where the final flavor is, is its own thing, but it's made up of all of these things. So when you're adding inclusions in your chocolate bar, do you <laughs> add them first and pour the chocolate over it or do you add, pour the chocolate and then add your inclusions? Depends um, what you want to do. I tend to add mine after because I want that nice shiny mm. surface on yeah, the other we want side. That, 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 that. Okay, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. But you could, you definitely could mix your dry ingredients into chocolate. As long as it doesn't have moisture, mm -hmm. it's not gonna hurt uh, your chocolate. So for instance, say that I want strawberry flavor in my white chocolate. Freeze dried strawberries. Freeze dried strawberries, taste delicious, P blend those up, throw it in your chocolate, and it looks gorgeous. It yeah. like makes it a pretty flex, pink color, yeah. so like flex in there. Say I want to add some vanilla flavor to my already vanilla flavor chocolate. Okay. Um, you want vanilla to add bean. vanilla bean, not a liquid vanilla that's going to seize your chocolate. So once you understand what chocolate is and how you can, you know, add things to uh -huh. it, it's really, really simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour our chocolate into the mold. We're going to scrape off the excess and then we're going to put it into the fridge right. to set up. And we'll just do all three of them and you can help me add some. All right ingredients Great. to the back and that's pretty much it. Fantastic, can't wait. So we can ah. add some bacon and some pecans. You're baking your lunch, so you know, just add whatever you want. Yeah. Oh no. Chocolate for lunch. Darn it. I'm gonna grab some of that there too if that's. And you know, think of this as like almost garnishing, right? So you want it to look pretty, like you're kind of sprinkling evenly, uh -huh. but also naturally, right? Yeah. You're not gonna sit there and like place each individual piece of bacon, um, but we're trying to eat, make it look nice. And like a garnish, what we're going for is 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 an accent, right? Right. Is, we're not going for like, this is chocolate covered bacon. Yes. We're going for this is chocolate with some bacon in it. Exactly. It's a, it's a the chocolate itself is the main component you, so that's why we started with a really good uh -huh. chocolate. We tempered it really well. And now we're adding the garnish, the flavoring, the seasoning. So do you press these down in there? Or do you just let them hang out at this level? I just, I go for the rustic. Okay. So if you were going to press it into there, you might push through the outer shell. Okay. Which is a risk that you're going to Yeah. Take and this is very, this is sounds weird, but this is very in style uh -huh. to, to do it this way. Yeah. You can do, I've seen some really beautiful things with pressed flowers, Ooh. dried fruits, that Lovely. it's really not even about the other side of the mold. It's about the beautiful dried ingredients on the other okay. side. So that's very avant-garde. Okay, they're going into the fridge. All right, I'll get we can the work on the next one. It's so, come out of the fridge and I see separation around the yes, edges. Yes, yes. So I, I have this really technical way. Okay, it's yeah. Proof, okay? okay. You just look at it. And you're like, yep, I see space. Okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> and and that's it, it, that's valid because you know you sometimes will not see separation because if you haven't scraped really close to the edge, it kind of holds on, but mm -hmm. that will easily snap when you flip it over. Um, what you're just looking for is that the the chocolate has contracted. Okay. Thanks to the tempering. Yeah. If it's not tempered or it's not real chocolate, it will not contract right. and it will never come out. And um, and it releases itself from the mold and it will be nice and shiny. And okay. then we get to do the satisfying flip out, okay? I'm, I'm ready. I'm a little scared. <laughs> if it breaks, we'll just eat it anyways. Right, okay. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh. Woo! Look how this shiny. This is shiny and the, the colored cocoa butter is amazing it's on gorgeous. there. It's just, just beautiful.
We did it. Yes. And they're beautiful. They're just beautiful. You could charge a lot of money for one of these gourmet bars. I, gourmet I would bars. pay a lot of money for one of those bars. But what I'm going to do instead is eat one now for free. I mean, you paid in so I'm time. Gonna, <laughs> I'm going to just take this one here. This this one broke a little okay, bit on I'll our, have on the our other dismount. Side of it. I'm just going to. Oh, see that snap? That yes. snap is what we're after. I'm going to do yep. that again up yep. here. Yeah. Ready? Ready? Nice. That's, That's what a we're nice for. snap. So if this wasn't tempered, it'd be kind of dull, it'd be kind of soft, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have that crunch, and then it just melts in your mouth. Mm. So I was not terrible. I was not terrible. Mm -mm. So some people don't love milk chocolate. Mm -hmm. This is milk chocolate, but you know we've really saved it by putting the salty bacon on there that mm -hmm. you prepared. Mm -hmm. The the and the the the, the graininess from the candied bacon, the candied uh, pecans, uh, everything is really well balanced. This mm -hmm. is just just beautiful stuff. And you can really make it your own. You could have a signature bar. If you sold this out of your own shop, or even if you're an at-home baker, mm -hmm. budding chocolatier, or you just want to make recipes online, it's unlimited. You just start with a good base of chocolate, a good quality chocolate, and then the options are endless. And a good thermometer. And a good thermometer. <laughs> because you can't achieve these results without tempering it properly. And the chances that you're going to temper it properly without a thermometer, they're low. Unless you are an experienced chocolatier, I don't, I don't think that you could. And um, it just makes things a lot easier. And, um, you know, why make it hard for yourself? And exactly. tempering chocolate already is kind of a tricky process. So just use the right tools, use the right chocolate. And, I mean, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, can you imagine getting this for Christmas? Like, Merry Christmas, Aunt Martha. Here's a gourmet chocolate bar <laughs> made from scratch. That I made, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Boom. That'd be amazing. Well, thank you so much, Liz, for being with us today and for sharing your knowledge with us and showing us how to do this and making some amazing chocolate. We're going to get off camera now. I'm going to stuff my face with this. <laughs> Lunchtime. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Uh, head on over to Liz's channel, Sugar Geek Show, as well. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy cooking from Filmworks.